Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Hope you're all doing well. So I thought it was about time I come on and get one of the challenges done in Paper Possibilities Crazy Crafters. Now the groupie challenge this month was suggested by the lovely Carol. Thank you, Carol. Now the challenge this month is to make some book paper bouquets which have been inspired by G. Kerr. So I will link G's video to these down below. Go and check it out and try and make some. They're heaps of fun. Now she makes them look really easy, but I am not that dexterous. So I actually haven't been finding it that easy to make the little bouquets. But I will make one and show you how I do it. <laughs> and then I will show you an alternative that I've found <laughs> so, so there's a couple of ways you can do them and of course you can use whatever paper you like now g turns them into paper clips but they don't need to be turned into paper clips they can be just stuck to a page or tucked in somewhere so i've got a few different bits of book page here so what i'm going to do is take a piece out and show you the way that G makes them, although she has a knack of it, I think she's practiced a bit. <laughs> I mean, I've practiced a bit, but I still don't really get it that well. Now, I know that her paper, she was, she was just ripping it and she was doing about two and a half inches by three and a half inch pieces. But you can adjust the size of the paper and of course that will adjust your size of bouquet that turns out. So she tends to put her, I don't know if she puts her thumb in there and rolls it around or a finger, but she does it really quick and neat and I cannot do that. So what I have been doing is just sort of like folding it up and over like so to get the point down the bottom and the, you want to get the um, triangle up the top there and that should sit in the middle. Now I haven't done this one too well, I told you I wasn't very good at it. So if you keep twirling it around, you'll see you end up with your triangle. And then what I've been having to do is get my skewer, put that down in the middle to just straighten out these bits because they get a bit creased and then it's hard for me to flatten out. So I do that and then I can like flatten it out and I've got this sort of bouquet looking thing. Now I'd prefer them to be shorter and wider, but that's where playing around with your sizes of paper and how how much you fold it in and that makes a difference so once you've done that you get your glue and just stick down this one end so that it holds so yeah it's definitely taken me practice and i'm still not very good at it so i have done a whole lot of them i've got paper and glue bits everywhere here so there's that one. Now I have made some more like that. I've done some with some pianola paper. That was very difficult. I've done some in this really dark paper. I've got some. This is the size that I think I like better. So <laughs> they're all different sizes and all pretty rough really. But that's what I have done so far. I like, I like this size I think. Like that. But yeah, I cannot make two the same if I tried. So that's what I've been doing. Now, then I grabbed a doily and I ripped it in half and I, I folded that around and I made these little ones, but they don't have the triangle, which sort of for embellishment's sake, I think the triangle looks good. And you can sort of back your embellishments onto them. So then I just grabbed the whole doily and I remember seeing people have done these heaps before um, in scrapbooking and that. So of course, if you just fold the two sides over, you've got your bouquet and that's rather big though. So then I thought, well, you do that with the doily, you can do that with the paper. So what I did was got my two and a half inch punch out. Now I can grab a few bits of paper. Let's see if it will go through three for me. We will see. And just cut some two and a half inch circles. And then because I'm just not that dexterous, I am finding it quite fiddly and frustrating and difficult. And some of you might be butterfingers like me. So what you can do then is just fold or roll and make yourself a little bouquet like that. You might find that easier like I do. And you can rip bits off in that if you don't want it to be so neat. 
and then same deal you just figure out where you need a bit of glue Oop, I keep throwing and tipping my glue which isn't a good sign and then we've got a little bouquet there and I quite like the size and shape of that one so that is another option if you are struggling like me so there's two bits there so you can just like roll it like that and then sort it out so it's sort of even if I can and you can wrap the circle part around if it's sticking out a bit much like this one is either wrap it around or just rip it off like that which I might do got glue coming out everywhere I'm having one of these everything's like really clumsy and awkward days today I don't like it when that happens it puts me off of crafting there we go so as I said, it's just an option. I do like the rustic nature of the way um, G does hers. I did one in some butcher's paper too. I do like the rustic nature of it and the um, harshness that goes across there of the straight line. Or the little verge bit there or whatever you would call it. But yeah, that is another option. So I've done a whole heap of bouquets, ready to go. So the next step will be to embellish these. So I will go and find some bits and pieces and we'll start sticking some stuff in there, I suppose. Try and get my critty on. Doesn't happen very often. So I've dragged out a whole lot of stuff to do some embellishing. I've gone around this little bouquet with my, I'm using Victorian velvet ink here. I found these beautiful little flowers. Now, I don't buy these new. I have managed to get more than I thought I had, though, um, via the secondhand stores. This is the latest bag I found, and that's got some beautiful ones in too that I'm going to be able to use. So, very happy with that. It gives me a use for them because I, I really don't use them much at all. So I've grabbed a few of those out to play around with and I've cut these ones down. I'm just using my old um, fingernail clippers to take the wires off. They're just easy to manage rather than having to hunt out my pliers. I've got some cheese cloth or mummy's cloth, whatever you call it. I've inked this piece up with the Victorian velvet as well, just dabbing it on like that. So I want to put that in. I did watch G's tutorial and she did something similar, I think, with the first one she made. So I haven't watched it really closely, but we'll see how we go. So I'm just going to whack some glue on the inside here to stick our cheese cloth down on. Let's see if we can sort of shove it in there. Just have a few bits sticking out like that. Can't chop that off, I think. Uh, little scissors. That'll be all right. And then we've got our little flowers. They're going to be quite bulky, so this is probably a good one for the cover. I was thinking of putting two lots in and having them hanging around like that. I quite like that, so now I've got to try and glue them in. Now, I think this is the one that I had down the bottom and this one up the top, so I might just put some glue around the back of the stem and that and shove it in there and we'll see how it goes. waiting for a takeaway that my kids are ordering. Going half in a hamburger with my son, he's trying to behave himself, so I should probably do so too. So we're having half a hamburger each, and that way we can have a little handful of chips. And then I'll do the same with this piece. We can slip it behind now. I've glued the others down, so that's nice. I can move these flowers around a bit because they're on wire and get them where I want them afterwards if I'm concerned. Just squeeze that all together so they stick. That's looking all right for me. I don't really do pretty stuff much, so 
Interesting. <laughs> I'll have to play around with the cheesecloth a bit though. got eyelash trim too that would be nice now I've got my scraps as usual my scrap laces should be able to find plenty in here really to embellish this little thing with I like the color of this but I don't think it's quite the size that I would well, it's sort of quite nice what else do we have some of this stuff, no. I've got some little bows that I got from the second hand shop around somewhere too, so I'll probably hunt those out afterwards. Some of this. Kind of like that on there. Oh, that looks really nice with it too, doesn't it? Down the bottom like that maybe. I might just do that. I do like the colour of that lavender with those flowers. I have so many offcuts could be for here forever. What about that? What about that? Now, the other thing is we could layer the laces up if we felt the need. So we've got some white there. I kind of like that. I'm going to do it just for the fun of it. just like that even. Just trim this. Oh, now I'm liking that. I like them both. But I might do might do that. Let's just stick some glue. We don't want too much glue because it does show through the lace a bit. Great way to use up the lace scraps. Now do I wrap it around to keep it neat? I might. Just gonna leave it this way to let that bit dry. So that's that one. Now lost my tissue. So what flowers do we have in here? They're all a bit of a mess really. Beautiful blue ones. Aren't they special? They would look nice in one of my little doily posies. Bit long. Might 
might be able to get away with just one mop. Let's cut them down a bit. Try this one. That one's probably a bit better. Now we definitely need something behind that, and I'm thinking some. White lace. Got some white lace here. It's quite nice. It's one a nice big bit. If it's going to sit up at all, though. What I could have done is a little doily collar or something that I stuck up there. Be nice once it's sitting on the page, though. Now, I do have some blue. It's probably a bit bright, but I couldn't find a better one, so. This is Salty Ocean, yes. I'm just gonna go around the edges like that, and we should do this as well. to break this doily. So let's see about putting our lace in. Just going to smother some glue around in there. That's quite nice. And then we'll try and stick our little flowers in. Fiddle with that afterwards. Let's get it sort of positioned. It's got one of its little petals under there and I don't want it staying under there. Maybe it's stuck. Oh no, there we go. That's better. Well, that's looking pretty. Be nice if we had more of the doily print at the front there, but that's all right because we'll add something else. We've got a little blue flower, but it's probably a bit big. Look at this. This is quite big though. What's a nice, nice colour though, isn't it? Let's have a look. Yeah. I like 
the leaves. That's kind of nice. All right, let's do something with that. Do I want anything else on there? I don't think so. Might chop this little leaf off that's just here. to not worry too much and try too hard here. Because, you know, half the time I have to edit like an hour or so out of my videos of me going, that? Or should I try this? Or maybe that. Getting frustrated with myself, so sometimes I've just got to stick things down and be done with it. So what I might do is go and embellish a few of these. I don't know if that's going to stick. That's right, if it doesn't, I can just trim it off. So I'll go and embellish a few more and then I'll come back and show you what I have finished up with. So these are my little posies. All done. Four's enough. That took me long enough, that's for sure. But awesome way to use up these little fabric scraps and the flowers, which I never use as well. So... Three of them I did with the G Kerr method of just rolling the paper over like that. And that was these three, it's a bit of glue there. So there's this pink one. I did end up using a bit of Linda's wonderful trim to put a little flower on there. And then this blue one you saw me make, that's with the doily base. And then I made this music page one. I had some bright white flowers, so I inked them with the ink that I used around the edge of the music page. Add a little ribbon, ribbon bow, can't speak tonight. And then this last one was made with one of the ones I did that I punched out a circle to make it a bit easier for myself. So really, when, once you're stuffing full of stuff, you can't really tell, which is good. <laughs> so that one, I, I decided to put trim at the back as an afterthought, because I couldn't really see the cheesecloth, so I just stuck it to the back real rough like. But that one will be stuck onto a page for sure. Um, so G does suggest if you want to make it into a paper clip, it's easier to do it before you embellish. And she tends to just, let me grab a paper clip. I think she sticks some book page onto some cardstock. Just a little square that will fit on the back. Little net, little. And she has little paper clips, which I probably don't have. So pretend I have stuck this book page onto a bit of cardstock just to make it a bit firmer. You put your little paper clip over the top. You stick that on the back like that. Stick this down. And then you can use it to stick onto a page with the paper clip. So that's what you want to do if you want to turn it into a paper clip. But I can still do it afterwards, which I'll do if I want to. You know, when I go to put them in a journal, I'll decide whether I want to make them paper clips or just little embellishments. So that was heaps of fun. I'll make a whole stack of these. They're beautiful. And as I said, it's such a good way to use those um, little tiny lace scraps and make something beautiful with them. So thanks heaps to Carol for the suggestion and to G for her wonderful tutorial. So give it a go, guys. Heaps of fun. They turn out great. Take care and I will see you again soon. Bye.